Hello, my name is Gabriel Chidolwe. I'm out here at Divicon US talking about how to improve performance of gate level simulation uh, using efficient modeling styles and uh, verification methodologies. Gate level simulation is still very much relevant in today's uh, verification as part of what we have to do uh, to complete our design process. Uh, at the very least, with gate level verification, we would want to make sure that our designs can come out of reset correctly, um, that our se power sequences, if we have any, um, are exercised correctly, and so on. Uh, so it's necessary to do gate level simulation. However, uh, gate level simulation itself, it can, for large SOCs, gate level simulation can take a long time to set up. Um, the runtime itself can be a challenge, and debug can also be a challenge. So uh, let's go through some of the uh, techniques that we can apply to help us improve uh, various aspects of gate level verification. The first is looking at improving the throughput of gate level simulations. And the, the other section involves uh, looking at the way cell libraries are modeled to make sure that those cells can benefit from improvement, performance improvements in today's simulators. Let's take some examples of how to improve the throughput uh, of the gate level simulation. And here I'm showing an example that, uh, where we've taken advantage of um, parallelism in the design uh, to break up portions of the design and compile those portions of the design in parallel. So at the very least, the gate level libraries could be compiled in parallel. Um, so if there's hierarchy in the design, then those can also be compiled independently uh, to get benefits. We, was, we did apply this technique on a design that gave us about 4.6x improvement. Um, other tech, in the paper, we're going to detail on a number of techniques that can be uh, applied to help you get gate level performance throughput. Some examples include um, making sure that you do not simulate a, a gate level netlist that does not have any SDF with timing checks enabled. And that's quite straightforward. If you're debugging a, a gate level design, there is usually no need to log signals of the internal cells because in most cases it's the netlist and the functionality of the netlist that you're interested in. Another technique that could be applied is taking advantage of tool features to allow you to apply SDF files on the simulator command line rather than through the $SDF annotate. Uh, commands in the code because anytime you have to change the SDF file, you would have to go through a recompile process before you're able to simulate. Another, te um, another uh, technique or methodology that could be applied to improve uh, throughput of uh, uh, gate level simulation uh, is evident in this example here that talks about uh, ATPG simulation and BIS simulations where you analyze the test vectors look out for the areas that are common between these test vectors, run those common bits first, and save the results of those common bits using checkpoint and restore type capabilities in a simulator. And then in the, the varying test vectors that are required to achieve your ATBG tests can then be applied on the saved uh, checkpointed simulation. Uh, and that can also be run in parallel to achieve even greater throughput. So on an example that we tried, uh, that was taking originally 109 hours. We found that the common setup phase was taking 15 hours. Um, after checkpointing that bit and running four sets of stimulus, um, the short, the longest run took 10 hours. So we get, got a, a total of 25 hours uh, run time. So that's a reduction of from 109 hours to 25 hours total, giving about 4x improvement. Now, so. These are basically examples of ways that you could apply simple techniques to improve on the gate level performance okay? and the gate level throughput. Another aspect to consider is the library itself. Um, the gate level libraries can be written in such a way that they don't benefit from performance optimizations. So here we give some ideas. And in, of course, in the paper, we're going to far more detail on the various ways. So I'll just take one of these. Uh, and just explain what's going on. On the left here, you have a cell model that, wh whose port, output port is being read back in the, in the, uh, the model itself, the functional part of the model. That does 
cause some tools not to optimize the cell efficiently. So a simple rewrite where you have a wire that can be read and written to and then assigning that wire to the output port, um, for example, can allow this cell to be optimized far more efficiently. Okay. And the other examples here uh, show similar types of ideas where a um, particular type of coding may prevent simulators from optimizing a cell and a simple change in the uh, way the cell is modeled will enable that cell to be optimized efficiently. So uh, thank you for listening and uh, I invite you to uh, download the paper and uh, have a read. Thank you.